All right, so uh, a month ago, my daughter comes to me with her iPhone. She says, Dad, I can't put any more stuff on my phone. It's full. I grabbed her phone and looked, and she had 985 selfies on her phone. <laughs> Uh, bad selfies as she's actually labeled them. Now given I've been occasion to take the odd selfie, I couldn't really dismiss it as, as a big issue. See, uh, I'm actually a pretty big fan of, of silly and all that kind of other stuff and like you see in this jumping photo, uh, I'm not afraid to dive into, delve into silly and share it with others and I think silly is part of what makes us human. It's an important thing and I also think it's something that our schools in most cases have sort of pushed aside in our sort of achievement obsessed uh, culture. Now. Uh, I might have a hard time convincing school districts to adopt sort of a culture of silly. Uh, at the same time, I think we're all interested in creativity and I think silly is this interesting and powerful way to sort of move towards creativity. I think it's also a great ingredient for uh, community as well. Uh, Clay Shirky has said, the stupidest creative act is still a creative act and it's the gap between doing nothing and doing something that's the real gap and it's the one that most of us has, have to move uh, towards in order to sort of en envelop this idea of creativity. And you see I've seen um, some people will actually say uh, you have way too much time. I don't know if you ever get this. I actually get that a lot. Uh, people say to me you have way too much time in your hand. When I post stuff like this online uh, in particular people say, and I always assume when they say that to me, I'm always a little offended because I assume that, well that means that you're doing something much more important like curing cancer or something like that else and I'm just making these silly pictures. And, and yet I've seen um, an evolution in my own creativity. Uh, this is one of the very first uh, Flickr groups I ever started where I took pictures of things my dog had chewed and started posting it and found out, oh other people had this same obsession too. I know it's really stupid and silly and you kind of build this little idea around weird things that have chewed by dogs, but, but this has grown. Uh, I started also creating these quotes that I would use in presentations and kind of creating these nice little graphics and then started that group. And Now this particular group has over a uh, thousand members. We have over three thousand photos that anyone in around the world can use. So again, just sort of seeing that evolution that started with chewing, uh, dog chewing images to something like that. And of course, we live today in this remix culture where we take uh, little bits of things and ideas and put them together and, and often throw away kinds of things and make them into something interesting and different. And we see all kinds of examples of this. One of my favorite examples is uh, a fellow by the name of Nick, Ber Nick Bertkes who took his mother's everyday gardening habits and just started taking pictures and videos of it and strung it together in kind of this story of his mom. Kind of a neat idea. Anyways, um, here's a little web trivia for you. Anybody know uh, what this represents? This is the world's very first webcam. It was developed in 1991 by Cambridge University students who needed to know, they were up on the sixth floor, coffee was on the second floor, they'd go down, find out the coffee pot was empty, thought, well, this is dumb. We need to figure out a way to deal with this and they created a webcam, kind of cool. Twitter itself might be seen as the ultimate experiments in stupid. Where did we ever come up with the idea that we needed this place to you know, take pictures of our food or tell people what we're having for lunch and all this kind of silly stuff? But yet I know that obviously for many people who have used Twitter understand that yeah, it kind of starts off that way but moves to something more meaningful and in fact you've developed relationships and things in the past because of that. It's already been talked about and we've seen it do things like um, overthrow governments. We, we've seen an astronaut, a Canadian astronaut at that, uh, show us wonderful images from space and connect with, with our country in powerful ways and, and, and more serious things where we've, we've reported uh, uprisings and other kinds of things. Now here's a really, really stupid use of Twitter. It's an office chair that tweets only at certain times and I think if you see the um, tweets there you can kind of tell that it happens during a certain bodily function where as the chair <laughs> does its thing. That's really dumb. <laughs> the evolution of that might be something like this which is a plant that tweets when it needs to be watered and you rig it up in there and all of a sudden you get a message that says I need water and it reminds you to do that. So you know a little, uh, still pretty dumb but at the same time a little bit more uh, interesting and evolved and yet we've seen that the next transition to something like Yushahidi where people take their cell phones and mark uh, in this case uh, Haiti, uh, earthquakes in Haiti where they were actually marking where the 
various areas of, of most destruction were so people could actually come and uh, deal with those effectively. And you see, I guess the thing is, it's easy to say, um, why don't we skip all that goofy stuff? Like, why do we need all that stuff? Let's just get to the serious. But I love this quote by uh, Wigenstein that says, you don't, people don't do silly things, nothing intelligent would ever, ever get done. And new media doesn't work this way. We don't start with that. We have to start with this experimental stage, the stage of horsing around and playing with this. And, and I would argue that I think that teachers have long been doing this in other ways. They've been able to take little bits of things they've had and turn them into more interesting and beautiful things with their students. And so having this ability to um, use things and, and be able to evolve from something plain into something interesting is, is something we've experienced before. But it begins, it's not just about the tools, it begins with teachers having relationships with students and asking them questions like, how could you make this better? What else could we do with this? What other things can you have? And, and helping students move to something more reflective and engaging as opposed to just being able to do things quickly. But we're going to have to start to realize that we have the tools available to us that actually afford us unprecedented possibilities to create, oftentimes with silly things, but yet uh, watching and asking, how do we make this better? How do we make this more interesting? Um, is something I think we're just going to have to get used to and embrace the notion of cheap failure, which is what Clay Shirky talks about. And I would also argue that <laughs> we need to also relax a little bit more. Our schools are pretty obsessed, again, with accountability. And I'll leave you with this last quote that I think is just sort of powerful that I've been saying a lot is adults need to have fun so children will want to grow up. Thank you. Uh,